Welcome back. Shop Dog says it's going to be another fun Pontiac day. We're going to be heading down in just a minute. Okay, we hear Jeff pulling branches with his mower. They just showed up, had a new IAC. We're like, uh oh, we better just pop that in while we're remembering. So, wandered over here, put the IAC and put those connectors back on. So, today's plan if everything goes the way it should is to make this car move under its own power we will see how that goes i think we're going to pick the front up make sure the front brakes are working the rear brakes seem to work i've got them loosened off off camera so you know i can turn them now of course we're in park but you can see it turns now uh pulled these off i cut these down that was getting very annoying anytime you had to do anything and lengthen this rod so hopefully that helps a little bit uh, the other big big thing that we did is you'll see where number two's spark plug wire which is me, which is this one right there that used to run across right here and there's a chance that that was one of our IAC issues is that crossing because these you know it's just some coils so I've got it run low Hopefully that's enough. I've seen reference of some people actually even using shielding, you know, aluminum foil or whatever on those wires. So hopefully we don't have to get that drastic. The other thing that's popped up is we finally have that three inch ring. And that's probably the first thing we'll address while everything is cold. Is that your pointer tool? It is my pointer tool. So we have our three inch ring. So we're going to see how that will work out. I really think that's going to make a giant difference in our cooling system. So stay tuned. Shop Dog's already watching. Shop Dog says that uh, we're taking too long, but we've been spending some time figuring out how we want to try this. So you can see from the two indicating devices where we're going to do the first two pins. So with that finger guard and that, I think that's going to create quite the the wind tunnel it's not a perfect circle but that's going to be fine i think i think that's going to give it the draw that it needs so you can see down in here what we're doing the hardest part is going to be getting in here with these little uh zippy things we're we're still working that out shop Todd's taking a nap while we're trying to get this fan shroud in these bottom two are fun yeah they're maybe easier to get in from the underside so we'll see more to come that was the opposite of fun but we now have our little lower shroud in let me show from this angle what we're talking about that should really help us direct air so he's going to put the top plate back on and we're going to bolt it down all right so with the finger guard on Make your own opinion on how much you think this is going to help. I'm not sure you guys can actually see it. Let me grab this light. And our thought process is that by encapsulating the lower end of the radiator and the fan there, that should force the blades down here to have to draw through the radiator. Um, up here, well, you know, I wish that would have been longer, but it just isn't. Uh, normally, I understand that those are mounted the exact opposite way. We are going to drill one tiny hole in the bottom the next time it's up so that it can drain any moisture. But I really think that's going to force the fan to draw air through the radiator. Uh, you know, remains to be seen, but that's got to help. And then by moving that IAC and changing where the dizzy is connected, you know, to a manifold instead of ported, I think we've made quite a bit of difference for the heat on this engine anyway. It really likes the advanced timing, you know. Of course, my son-in-law made a mess right there. We'll have to clean that. Okay. Had to hit the head real quick. And during that time, it looks like old dog sled's gone up. So we're going to move the jack up front and verify that the front brakes work because we don't know we have very little history with this so we want to verify that before we do anything else but yeah the other thing i do notice 
no more drip off the power steering so we'll see if uh if that comes back hopefully it doesn't and i know the shiny always makes me think it's leaking but no that's just really clean right there um yeah so shop dogs watching old neighbor jeff working and i'm gonna move this jack okay so he's getting ready to add our little just a little drip hole just in case water sits on that i don't want it just sitting there so always got to plan ahead of course we forgot how low this car is so we're just going to start it and use the hydraulics to pick it up a little bit i don't feel like fighting the put a little jack here game so yeah yeah so back down okay while well, diesel's hitting the head we got pixie in there she's not started it in modern times so let her let her pump cycle yeah she's filling up go for it okay so she cold started that'll get better yeah, you know, the IAC is very, very open. I'm going to have to change the initial cold open from like 28 to probably 50 because once this is hot, I'm really uh, barely using the IAC. No. Oh, it's screaming for gas again. Let's put some fuel in. Luckily, we have some right here. Now that we're in Skyjacker mode, that should work pretty slick for us. I bet we clear the exhaust a little. <laughs> this thing's a 4x4 four four now. Well, 2x4, but you know. How many inches of clearance between the bottom and top? Holy moly. Quite a bit. Of course, it's funny. You still, even at this height, can't get this tire off. <laughs> nope. It's not enough. you got to pull that shock. We already know. Bummer. we got to get over the crown of that tire. <coughs> oh, my COVID's... Ah, I'm a goner. <laughs> So we left Pixie in, we're just going to slide the jack forward, pick the front up, spin tires and have her slam the brakes and make sure those actually work because we don't know. Okay, that was successful. Hit the brake. Yeah, it's not turning that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do real quick is go ahead and bleed the power steering since we're up. So Pixie can start her car, do not go into gear and just slowly turn left right from lock to lock nice and slow this will be interesting yeah there's still humidity here so one of the things we want to know is is there anything that we're going to hit the other thing we want to know is do we have all the air out of the power steering it's been sitting long enough it probably is but, let's see. Okay, have her go the other way. Okay, the other way now? Turn the other way? Yeah, we'll put that cover on at some point. I hope it's got a little more turn than that. Was that it? Was that all the way? Okay. 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 We're touching oil pan over here. Touching oil pan? That's why we're here. Let's see. Okay. You sure about that? Yep. Here, let me have the light. Okay, now go back slowly. Yeah, I can see the witness mark. I see a tiny witness mark. Is that it? Is that as far as we can go? Okay, can we go any farther? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Okay, we got a little bit on this drag arm. We're going to want a clearance. Yeah, let's go to the other side. Oh, is that pretty cool or what? 
Okay, so when we look on here, you can see I've got a little spot right here that we're just gonna clean up. It just barely touches, but that's enough. Okay, let's go the other way. Okay, let's go the other way. There's no way that that can reach. <laughs> Okay, slow down. Is she getting there? Okay, is that it? Okay, yeah, leave the wheel there for a minute and I'm gonna do something. Interesting, we were just putting uh, air in the tires. I what? Yeah, IAC says it's zero. I can hear the IAC going. So I'm trying to run this and that, but I want to catch the sound of this because as soon as this is down, I'm going to put my finger over the IAC hole because the IAC says it's close. It says it's at zero. What temperature are we at? We were at 175 when it did it. That's where it was last time, right around 180. But watch this. Wow. This car is much taller suddenly. <laughs> So that kit really does pick the car up. I bet. Oh yeah, one. Now the IAC is really at zero. This IAC is not closed. It thinks it is. So if I pull it and plug it back in. What's the TPS at? Okay, so that's our li weird little issue. I'm not sure how we can duplicate it on command, but I'm curious, is that because of interference from the distributor? Or is there something fishy with this sniper? Okay, you can't see them because they're on the other side of the car, but we have blocks, even with that little pop-up thing, because turn off the car, turn it back on, goes away. We're dying to know, now that we know we do have brakes, does the car move? It's only going to move just a little bit. It doesn't move. So, put on the brake. Oh, go to reverse. And now you're in reverse. Did you get a DD? You're in reverse. Slight lift and push on the brake. Okay, so we're going to try driving it. Let's take a quick peek for Shop Dog. I think he's up with Mama who's up making salsa. Um, okay, no reason. As far as we can tell, we have brake. Definitely test the brake on the way too. But yeah, it should start. And if it starts to idle up crazy, hit the brake and turn it off. Line yeah, up. just back towards the gate. Okay. Am I pulling this one here on the back? Yeah, oh yeah, pull those. See, we'd have had to drive over those, which the blue truck does no problem. Right, you're clear on this side. Okay, and you're watching this, and I'm watching over here. So, yeah, let's see if Dog Sled will drive. Oh, yeah, now she's like looking at mirrors and stuff. Yeah, and I know some people think I'm too cautious, but, you know, don't want to destroy anything. Started good hot. Right, we're on this side. I'm clear. Right, 
Hey, brakes seem to be working. Yep, brake is stopping the car. Guy is a big car. <laughs> okay. Boy, this car is huge. I'm looking clear on both sides. Uh, it might be a little off. Put wiggle a little. There. Yeah, reverse is a big gear. Okay. Keep her going. Oh, there's a big car. That was a noise. Okay. Not yet. She'll hit that. <laughs> okay, keep going, keep going. Okay, now you can turn. Oh, neighbor Jeff's watching. Well, we'll work on that a little more. Boy, we got her in four-wheel mode. This is so cool. All right. And now we're going to see if we can kind of drive it around. How does it feel, you know? Every now and then just slam the brakes, too, to see if it just, how it feels. We want to back up to the gate. Sure. And then she can kind of head out yeah. into the yard and do some loops and we'll see how this goes. And yes, this is probably a longer video, but we're excited. Yes, the, the driveway's weird. Okay. There we go. Wow, that's why we put it in there. Oh, this thing looks freaking sick. Now, it would not normally drive this high, but we've got to test things at their extremes. I gotta cut this branch. Okay. There. Hey, there's a person at my gate. The ring told me. Okay. All right. Try not to hit the fence. So yeah, just drive around, give it a little gas. Uh, brake works. Well, I want to watch how the body whirls and everything. Especially with her all the way up. Yeah, see now that's not water anymore. It's starting to become yeah, smoke. To smoke. God, that's a big car. That's every bit as big as the Impala. It might even be longer. And with that with that giant roof in the back, it feels bigger. I can see that the shocks need tuned. Because the back is very, very, very soft. Okay, I think we're gonna let Diesel take a spin. Okay, diesel's turn so he's gonna kind of come up and see what he thinks of the brake and everything and yes we're sitting high but nobody feels like monkeying with that right now yeah I think we're finally getting the exhaust warm that smoke and not water now because it's it's humid it's Minnesota Got good brake. What's up? Feels like driver's side like grabbing a little bit. Oh, it looks like it too. Here, I'll put this in the video. Do that again? Yep. Yeah, that moves a lot. We're gonna wanna look at those caliper brackets. See if they're uh, torqued correctly, because we didn't do that.
Yeah, we just threw the Impala air cleaner on there for right now. I just didn't want to kick up any dust. Yeah, the backup camera sure is handy, isn't it? When the car is 20 feet long. Yeah, and I imagine we won't always ride this high. And we know that the front suspension needs work. We already know that. The bushings aren't the best and all that. It, they should have done it when they did the kit. But they didn't. But that's a project we can do as a weekend project. You know, before it's time to align it. And that's literally order a bunch of bushings and ball joints and go to town. What we want to know is, does the car work? <laughs> Yeah, those rear shocks, sir. That's a little bouncy. <laughs> We're gonna wanna wanna change that a little. Of course, we really should do those changes at ride height. See it bouncing. So yeah, a little stiff in the back yet. Oh, here, let me zoom you in. But it's running. So look at that. The dog sled works. Oh, now it's a lot closer because I'm zoomed in. Okay, that's enough footage. Hey, here's another data point. So we had put that, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I put some shielding over that wire and we just pulled her up on the ramp and she's idling high it says the IAX closed, but a little bit ago at the same temperature and the same throttle position, the IAC was 14 and we were idling at 650. So I guarantee, even though it says the IAX closed, if I go in there, take the air cleaner off, put my finger over the IAC hole, it's going to die. So we got to figure out why it's doing that. Is it a problem with this sniper or the wiring or what's going on? We don't know dog says we're still tidying up a little bit throwing out garbage and kind of picking up a little but I think in a little bit we're actually gonna back this out and rinse it off look how dusty it got okay salsa tasting time oh and the wife's been growing some Reapers so we're gonna do a quick taste and we're gonna be upset about it but we have to do it all right shop dog says back to work I'll tell you those were a little hot as a guy who enjoys hot peppers those were a little warm so we're gonna come in here do a start on the car now that it's heat soaked yes diesel's playing silly and uh i think once he plays with the air ride a little bit sets it down to a normal-ish ride height i think we're gonna back it up and actually put all the windows up and rinse the car off like i said earlier the dust is thick and it's just absolutely gorgeous out today it's just gorgeous, so what a day to rinse the car. Okay, step one, let's see if the car starts. Oh yeah, no worries. Started right up. The big thing now is Diesel's gonna walk around and try to set the car at a more reasonable height. Yeah, so he's got his little, that's too much. <laughs> do you want to you want to tape oh just look at your wife and try to make her kind of make her level make her a little more level the other way yeah, but you're going up in that back corner because you're, you're not sitting where you would be sitting in the seat. Okay, hang on. See, that's the problem he's having is he's looking at it and he's just pushing random buttons. Whoa. Okay. That's a little high in the front. Bring both fronts down. A little more on, a little more. And a little on this side. And bring the backs down just a touch. No, down. 
And the other one? You feel levelish? Yeah, it's hard to tell. <laughs> well, everything's curved in these cars. Oh, he's out back looking. All right. Yeah, but you don't know that because of the weight distribution. So, yeah, I don't think that those numbers are, are relevant. Okay. Yep, I got shop dog. Shop dog says, why are you holding me? And just straight back is fine. Okay, brake still works. That's always good to know. Yeah, we're definitely going to want to adjust the shock. See how they're a little on the bouncy side. Good over here. It seems silly, but all that stuff we have taped to the windshield makes it really hard to see. So it's good to let somebody know. Yeah. And just a little bit more before we rinse her. There, that'll work. So sweet, we'll get a hose hooked up. Dog's not sure about all these shenanigans. But if you recall the last time we did this, it was February and much, much colder. Of course, we don't have bikini babes. You know, this isn't one of those kind of channels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't, uh, we don't use the flesh pedaling to, to get some views. Well, that's okay. No, 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 not around here. Nobody does. No, they'll pay us not to. But yeah, we've been wondering about pulling some of this dust off of here for a while. And the water is just way safer than wiping. Remember, that dust can be abrasive. So we'll be back in a little bit. We're just gonna rinse this down. Like that. This is literally the fewest cars we've had in here since we built the barn. So, yeah. Look at that. He's even doing the windows. Doing a good job. Oh, like a step stool? Something. Hey, we have step stools because we're short. Just to make sure we don't have any trouble, we threw another five gallons in real quick. Figured if we're gonna accidentally spill any, we might as well do it before we wash the car. But yeah, she's looking pretty good. Let's get a, a wide angle shot here of just how big this car actually is. It's looking good though. I can't wait to put the hood on, but there's no point in doing it until we can get the cowl on there. And we can't put the cowl on until we can put the dash pad in because there's bolts from the outside. So that's why there's no hood yet. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay. So it's starting to clean up pretty nice. The best part is getting this engine bay rinsed out because we, you know, we spilled a little coolant and there was dust and, you know, we've done some drilling and so, yeah, I've been dying to rinse this out for quite some time, actually. Okay, now that the car's been rinsed off, I think Diesel's going to take it for a little putz around the yard again, just kind of get a feel for it. We're not overly happy with the brake yet. We know we want to look into that. Um, we've got that weird IAC problem and literally we've got to redo that dash pad, get the dash installed so we can put the cowl on, so we can put the wipers on, and once the wipers and the cowl are on, then we can put the hood on, and then we can work on that air cleaner. We've still got to get our little hose barb to do that. Other than that, it, it all seems to work. We're dying to take it for a ride. So, yeah, this is looking pretty good. Okay. Oh, I can see my finger. Let's move that. Come here, Ollie. Yeah, it's still a little bouncy. We're going to want to set those shocks. We have no idea what they had them set at. Yeah, you can hear them grabbing. Yeah, so we think the driver's front grabs a little bit. 
So we're curious about a brake hose issue or a bleed back issue, but we'll get there. God, yeah, at a, at a decent ride height, that sure looks nice. Seeing shop dogs inspecting. He's curious. There's Cheryl's there without him. He does not know what to do. He's like, but Pixie, come on. Come on, buddy. Yeah. No, we're not racing the car. You want some beer? Yeah, we're not racing the car. Yeah, the dog sled's looking good. God, that's a nice looking car. All right, at this point, there's a few things. One, when you hit the brake if the car is moving, this caliper moves and sometimes it doesn't seem to release. That could be a few things. Um, we're super curious since we didn't check if the previous owners, when they put those adapter brackets in, if they actually tightened them correctly since every other thing in this car was loose. Uh, so we're gonna check those. We're going to check and make sure that the hoses aren't blocked or collapsed because even though they're new, that doesn't mean they're good. Um, there's definitely a return issue. We're curious if the issue is in the booster, the master, or this brake. So we're figuring out how we're going to troubleshoot that without spending a bunch of money first. We have that IAC issue. It's happened like five times today. We It always seems to be around that 175 degree range. We don't know if that actually matters. Um, I had put that little heat shield on there in the hopes that it would kind of shield it from EMF. And I'm not sure that it actually has anything to do with that. I'm actually getting to the point where I wonder if as things heat up, if the IAC itself is binding in the throttle body somehow. And then it freaks out and tries to retract it one way or the other and gets stuck and says, nope, I'm at zero, but I'm not. So, when, on a cold, cold engine, I'll pull all of that apart and pull the throttle body up and, and take the IAC off. And look what it looks like back there. I wish I had a sniper out right now so I could see what that looks like, but I don't currently. And I don't see one coming anytime soon. So, this is the car with the problem. This is the one that's going to happen on. I'm hoping I don't have to completely remove it. It, I mean, it's not the end of the world. We have all these connectors, but, you know, one of them is zip-tied down the the tube for the O2 sensor. And, you know, obviously we got the one running around for the throttle position sensor. So, I mean, if I don't have to, if I can just turn it right here and work right here, that would be great. Cooling system seems to be working great. We've never broke 200 since we put this little thing on. It is nice out today. It's only 70 degrees or 72 degrees, but... Just sitting and idling in the past, it would just sit and creep and creep and creep. So that may be the difference right there. This little bit of extra making sure that the air is pulling through. So we're very, very hopeful there. Other than the fact that, you know, she's still got to do the vinyl wrap on the dash pad and we've got to get the dash put together. And then once the dash pad is in and, and everything there's some bolts from the outside that we've got to do once those are done we can put the cowl on we can put the wipers on i know you heard me just say this like a minute ago but for us that was a while ago <laughs> um and then the hood can go on once the hood's on we can look at how we want to deal with this i don't want to do any work to it until i know it clears the hood because if it doesn't well then why, why spend money and time on it so let's go from there. So for now, it's just borrowing the one off the Impala because I want to keep stuff out of the intake track. Uh, literally, there's not many systems we haven't tested yet. The uh, cruise control can't be tested until, one, we can drive the car, and two, that the uh, measured mile is done. Um, other than that, everything else we've tested has worked. In fact, in the not-too-distant future, we're probably even going to try to charge the air and get that running as well because um, i don't know that that's coming apart again we do expect to still drain the coolant one more time because even though we're not having any issues now i do believe he's still planning to get that high flow water pump and separator plate 
so that we can change those just so we know they're good. We probably should have done it before, but it's a 40,000 mile engine. We were like, eh. But the more we've seen of this cooling system, the more we're like, yeah, let's, let's just go ahead and change that while it's in the shop. Uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty, pretty stoked. Everything kind of works. We're, like I said, we're not happy with the brakes and we do know that we've got to deal with the bushings and everything, especially the upper control arm bushings are just shot and you can see it, you know, it, it swaps around. We knew that we've known that for years. That was always a, Hey, we can just handle that on a weekend project. Let's do three things at a time and get the car running before we dealt with that because that's just suspension stuff we also wanted the engine in while we did that because it does make your life easier so at this point i think we're doing pretty good okay while this car is cooling i figured crap i haven't started the impala in ages so we're letting her do a heat cycle we're still a little worried about the compressor it blew a lot of pag oil out so at some point, I'm going to pull the compressor when it's over there, empty it out, measure the oil, see if I can find out how much it's supposed to be, and uh, we're going to try to save this peanut compressor if we can. I really, really like this front runner system though. Um, I wasn't really doing videos way back with all the work we've done on this car, and it is original SS427. Everything for it is literally in buckets under here and stuff up there. It could be put back, but why? Why would you put it back? Um, I even still have the original dash, everything. In fact, this one had the multiplex stereo, which sounded terrible compared to a modern stereo. It's a great car. I love this car. And uh, haven't run it in a little while. So we're just letting her warm up. It's a little louder. And that's a Holly Terminator. And in fact, the whole reason I thought about it is the fact that as soon as this car has a hood, this car is going to wind up in the other room. And the Impala is coming here because this winter I am doing wiring and adding the rest of the air conditioning stuff because the wife really thinks AC is the right way to go. We know that this is a long video and Chop Dog doesn't even care. But we have one more test we want to do. Cheryl's going to start the car. Diesel's going to set each corner to a, a given value. The car may not sit square because different length lines, blah, blah, blah. And then in a couple days, we'll pull it up and see where they're at and see if any one of the corners decays faster than the others. So say they're all at 100 and the car sits wonky. And then in three days, he pulls it up and one corner is at 70 but the other three are at 90 that tells us something if they're all at zero that tells us something as well you know just another piece of data that we'd like to have yeah, wish we would have caught that but uh she just skyrocketed to 1600 rpm and we watched it happening cheryl said hey something's funny and the eye kept dropping and then it was two and then it was zero and then the engine went to 1600 rpm and we had to shut it off so it started at 165 temp wise and when it jumped to the higher rpms it was like at 170 171 we're sitting at 172. yeah there's something Ooh. funky going on yeah that stinks because the way we shut it off Ooh. <laughs> is that shop dog no 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 that is unburned hydrocarbons so that was strange that was very strange yeah so that was what happened that very first time how come I can never seem to have the phone on when that happens? Car restarted just fine. You can see the IX at 22 now. We're hanging in our 650. But let's go back to, see he just got the two front wheels. It's really difficult to do it, but he's trying to get close to 100 on each corner. So he's got another one, which is that back corner. Remember, he would be sitting in the driver's seat. But you add a little, and then it has to level out. Just a touch more. We're just curious what our decay rate is. We also have no idea how accurate these sensors are. As you can see. So, he's just making some notes. And we'll see later. Ooh, 100 pounds is 
quite high up in the air, but that's fine. It'll help us figure this all out. And you can see, charging system's fine. Yeah, there's zero chance that's going to do it on screen for me. With that, I think it's a good day. We had a lot of fun. We found a lot of things out. But most importantly, what do we say? We, we drove, drove the, the dog, dog sled. sled.